Did you know that the reaction to you just casually playing catch before the game would have the reaction that it has? I assume yes, because everything you do gets talked about by everybody on earth. But the amount of swag and casualness to you transferring weight from one foot to the other, playing catch, no grimace on your face at all, has a lot of people thinking, you're going to make it back this season. What was that for you? Is this a normal day in rehab? How long have you been throwing like this? And are we back this year, like next week? Aaron, let's go. <laughs> yeah, let's just cool our jets a little bit. Next week, I heard. Wow, here we yeah. go. Oh. On. He can just catch We're on a bye week. We're on a bye week. We're on a bye week this week. So definitely. Next good. game? Yeah, yeah, two definitely. weeks? Here we go. Yeah. More time. Next Read game. I'll, I'll definitely be back for the next game. But uh, Whoa. as you can see, I'm in rehab, rehab right now. We're in. Uh, we're about five weeks tomorrow since surgery. Five weeks yesterday was uh, uh, was the injury. So the goal was, you know, the first goal was to be able to get back on the field for the October first game. Uh, I was hoping without crutches, I just wasn't actually anywhere close to to being able to, to get off of them. And then the next goal was to be able to throw on the field uh, on the fifteenth. It's really just for me to be able to feel more normal. You know, just to be back around the guys was incredible. To be on the field without crutches, to be able to be on the sidelines, to be on the headset. Uh, it made me feel, you know, like I wasn't uh, so separated from the team. So really thankful for that. And, yeah, obviously just about anything I do or say, uh, there's some sort of reaction. Uh, that's kind of uh, where I'm at right now. And I appreciate it. But that was a, a special moment for me to be able to feel a little bit more normal. Uh, in, you know, five weeks it has been really uh, – really tough, uh, not just physically, but, you know, emotionally and spiritually. So your your recovery seems like it is anything but normal right now. You seem like you've sped up the process pretty quickly. Are you able to talk about any of the specific modalities, as you like to say, uh, of what you're doing to kind of, you know, have such an, an instant impact and already be walking, throwing, doing all these things? That's the big question for my teammates, friends, and obviously I'm sure outside of, of that group, but uh, – Listen, I, I believe in the power of intention. I believe in the, in the, uh, the power of your mind and, and the will, willpower. Uh, basically, this entire time, I've kind of said this is what I'd like to do rehab-wise. Uh, got some incredible people to work with, not just the Jets, but uh, but Heather here is, is amazing to work with. Uh, Neil, you know, my doctor, Neil Atrosh, did a, a kind of a newer, uh, innovative surgery. And, uh, you know, I, I asked him if we could push it, if we could push it beyond the normal protocols. Um, Cam Akers had the same surgery. He was able to come back in about five months. Uh, me and JK uh, both had the surgery within a couple of days of each other. And it'll be interesting to see uh, what both of our prognosis is and, and our timetable. But I I just wanted to do things uh, uh, quicker and smart, but quicker. And, and like I've said, you know, the most important thing is you just don't want to stress the Achilles. Stress, okay. Stretch, not okay. So it's just about being smart with the rehab and pushing it as much as I can and then backing off on the days that it doesn't feel great. So what does it feel like whenever you're throwing there? Is it just tight? And what can you do? What can't you do right now? Yeah, I felt great. You know, I really felt great. I had uh, just a
do explosive movements, and, and these are all progressions that take time. So th this is obviously we're ahead of schedule. There's a lot of factors to that. Uh, there's the way I've attacked the rehab. There's obviously the surgery that uh, Dr. Elitrash did. There's the rehab that I've done uh, and kind of the round-the-clock approach that I've had. There's implementing the diet um, that I've been doing as well. And then just the power of uh, the power of the mind and the power of the manifestation of the of the desires. Um, all those things together still doesn't get you back on the field. You have to hit a bunch of bunch of different things and and be feeling a certain way. Uh, but you know that's that's the goal. We'll see what happens. I'm not going to put a timetable on it specifically. That makes absolutely no sense. Anybody that does doesn't realize that there's a lot of things that have to happen to get to that point. But it's going to have to be jogging and then explosive movements and then practicing and then. Uh, everybody's signing off on it and you know hopefully we get to to have that, those conversations that's amazing three weeks dude three weeks from right now he's going to be yep. back playing football fully wow because we saw wow. i mean he was walking that one jet drive thing we mm -hmm. saw yep you know because on tv we saw him do this one mm -hmm. and they say let me get one and yep. do this whole thing but in the locker room they showed him just oh what <laughs> what surprise what that was like three weeks afterwards. Yeah. That's not supposed to happen. And then now you're swaying. We just assume it's going to take place before this season ends with a lot of time left. And with what you've seen from this Jets team, hey, what we've all seen, it's like they're going to be in this thing. And this is a powerful statement I hope you hear uh, from the head coach. For those that didn't, here's Robert Sala talking about Aaron Rodgers being in the building and everything that he's brought. And Aaron's probably going to be uncomfortable listening to this, but it sets up for the next question about his relationship with the head coach of the team. I, you know, um, I, I've told him this. Now, you, so I, from a dynamic standpoint, just so people understand, when, when players go on IR, most of the time they're, they're kind of off on their own. Um, and usually the older they are and with regards to their time in the league, the more liberal in terms of just going out there and getting the rehab that they feel they need because they know their bodies better than anybody. So whatever he needs to do to attack his rehab, we're going to support him either way. Selfishly as a coach, um, his superpower is his presence. Um, and him being in this building, being around his teammates, being in the locker room, his his positive attitude, the uh, his, his thoughts of manifestation and all that stuff, I think it's powerful. And uh, so obviously as a coach, of course, selfishly, I want him here every single day. I want him in every meeting. I want him on the practice field. I want him on the sideline. I want him in the locker room selfishly because he's a uh, he's an unbelievable human. And outside of scheme and playing ability, the intangibles that he brings to his teammates and and the fuel I think the teammate his teammates will give to him uh, is priceless, and it, it just it's uh, you just can't quantify it. You know you can't put a, a, a price on it. And um, but as far as being on the headsets, love his thoughts on the headsets. I guess you'd have to ask Hackett on how much it actually provides, but I, I definitely <laughs> know he's he's got thoughts, and uh, I know he's helping the quarterback the best he can. So him having a headset on, I do, I, I can tell you this much: it's it doesn't hurt, and. Uh, you know, so just having him out there, it's uh, it's awesome. And him walking around, I think it's goes to show just the type of mindset that guy has. I, it's, I've never had an Achilles tear. Hopefully, I never do. I don't want to ruin my golf game. But uh, he um, oh. he's uh, from my understanding, him walking around is is crazy. Okay, I hope your golf game's good, Coach. But also, as a guy, you know, with everything that happened in Green Bay and how it went. And you go over to the Jets organization, big city, and how it kind of all unfolds. To watch what your coaches were saying about you in hard knocks obviously had to be absurd. But to hear him describe what your presence means to that team has to feel good. And on the flip side of that, do you feel an obligation whenever you're there to try to help out as much as possible, to be on the headset? And how much do you take that into consideration whenever you're back in the building? Zero obligation whatsoever. I just did what I felt like was going to feel the best. And, you know, I like helping out. So I was on the headset every game in the preseason. I think the coaches appreciate it. Sometimes I can be a voice of calm and reason on there when there's eight different people trying to talk to Hackett or trying to tell him to say something to Zach. Uh, so, listen, I don't think I had a major impact on the game. Maybe calm some people's nerves. Maybe a couple thoughts I threw out, uh, you know, might have gotten taken into account and, and made their way into the into the call. But 
Uh, for me, it just, it, again, it was all the parts of feeling a little bit more normal, feeling like I was a part of it, feeling like I was back. And I love Robert. I mean, Robert has been great from day one when I came in there. Uh, I love the way he leads. He's an alpha. He, uh, you know, he really cares about the guys a lot. He sets the, you know, kind of the vision every single week. Uh, he doesn't change, you know. He, the standards don't change. The accountability doesn't change. It doesn't matter if he's talking to, you know, the youngest guy on the team or myself, the oldest guy on the team. It's always the standard is the standard. He holds the guys accountable. He's a fantastic coach. And, you know, I was I was kind of on the fence this last week, to be honest, because my rehab has been so great, and I've really been coming along uh, so incredibly well here uh, on the West Coast. I was like, you know, if I fly out, I'm going to miss a few days of rehab. And, you know, am I, am I going to regret these, you know, a couple of days not getting the same type of work in? And I just kind of hit up Robert. I said, hey, what do you think? And, and he said, uh, need you out here, buddy. Oh, that's awesome. That had to feel that was, good. That was, cool. that, was, that was cool. So it was good to be out there with the guys. Obviously, incredible game. Uh, incredible performance by our defense, and then just enough enough plays on offense to uh, to make it work. But you know, when when you win the turnover battle uh, by four, you should win those games. And our defense came through. Offense, we took care of the football. We weren't great in the red zone, but Greg came through with some big uh, clutch kicks. And then Tony Adams with the pick in the fourth was, uh, you know, that uh, two minutes left was incredible and. It's a good feeling. That locker room was one of the most fun uh, scenes that I've uh, I've been a part of after a win. Just seeing the guys and the excitement. They, basically, we made like a little tunnel, uh, a little like uh, congratulatory tunnel for guys coming off the field, and it was it was pretty awesome to see the smiles and and Woody was you know he was you know, he was threatening a couple of days of work this week for the guys. Uh, it's our bye week, you know, and for me especially under. Under Mike, it wasn't even a question all those years. It was like, you come in Monday, you get a lift, and then you get the hell out of the building, and we'll see you the next week. And there were some rumors about coming into work till Wednesday. Uh, so luckily for the guys, Woody found uh, some charity in his heart and uh, allowed Salah to let him off yesterday. So it's going to be a nice nice long bye week for the boys to rest up and get ready for the uh, uh, game against the Giants next week. Oh, God. Did he- Johnson and Johnson are such a good guy. Truly. You know what I mean? Changing the world. So, I saw the, were you jumping in that tunnel? Were you jumping too? Because we saw you throw. I, I wasn't jumping, but I bet you if he was a veterinarian, he might not have let, let guys out uh, on Monday. So big shout out to the, uh, to the Johnson family. Go ahead, AJ. If people are going to Google what that means, that was another pretty big. It's good. You're the man. Go ahead, AJ. Uh, as far as wearing the headset and, and acting like you're a coach on the sidelines, is it tough not to give more input and it give you any kind of fire to think of, hey, eventually when I'm done playing football five, ten years from now, maybe I'm going to coach and call some plays? How would you even get that out with a straight face? <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> I think you'd be a great coach. Yeah, your headset looks super cool on you yeah, yeah, with that hat look. too. Yep. With that hat. I'm sure you'd be able to handle some young kid who can't make any of the throws that you can make. I'm sure you'd be great and have a lot of patience with that guy. <laughs> Just throw the ball. <laughs> I can't. Yeah, good, you can't. <laughs> good sarcasm. Good sarcasm right there, H. Appreciate that. Uh, I do not plan on being a coach. No, there we go. Yeah. I was a little disappointed that we didn't have more hat options. I saw Big Mike last night. Uh-huh. I thought their hat was pretty cool. They just had the star when it had some multicolors. Um, I don't know. I, 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 uh, I enjoy being on the headset. Again, I'm not trying to feed too much. I can't talk directly to Zach. I can talk to the offensive staff and switch over to line two, which is usually like uh, some of the assistants and the line coaches. And every now and then it's like, it's like your mom listening to your calls when you're in, uh, you know, junior high trying to talk to, you know, cute girl you're interested in just kind of listening in and then just throwing stuff in every now and then to kind of forget you on there but uh who the hell I have is fun that? With it. who is that <laughs> who the hell just yeah. said that uh it's aaron yeah oh sorry i have fun with it but no i don't have any desire to be a coach in five to ten years and i'm done playing age but yeah that great co- question that coaching life is crazy you know that coaching life is bananas. It's, a schedule. it's a schedule i mean there's so much so much guarding your desk i don't think i can handle that and it's like just that's how it is, too. Like you, you know, you know what I mean. You gotta like, be the head coach. If you're the head coach, though, you control that, Aaron. I don't think so. Because if you lose, 
as soon as you lose, it's like you got to guard your desk. Well, we got a guy that Aaron does things his own way, you know? You're right. Look at his Achilles, right? Look yeah. at his, you're, That's what you're talking about. This guy does yeah. stuff his own way. He actually defies science. This guy right here, right now. That's what they're saying about you. Shannon Sharp said this morning. It's, it's like we learned. If science is Dr. Fauci, you damn right I'm defying science. All right. <laughs> okay, that's on me. Got him. That- <laughs> You let him right yeah, into that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Fauci's just sitting at home, reminiscing about his terrible opening pitch, mm-hmm. and he's like, "It's Tuesday again. <laughs> Great. Everybody's gonna be reminded. <laughs> Everybody's gonna be reminded." Uh, last question about your time out there with the Jets beating the Eagles from Darius. Yeah, we got to go back to that throw. You know, as a DB, I'm always checking out the swag of other players, quarterbacks playing or not. Uh, those Adidas shoes, are those specially made in big-ass shoes, and what do they do <laughs> for the Achilles if, if if they are specially made by Adidas? Let's, uh, yeah, thanks, DB. Uh, those those were actually a size bigger than I usually wear, but I have these uh, these inserts in there to kind of uh, offset my Achilles not sitting at 90 degrees just yet, for uh, again, for the safety of uh, Achilles, so we're not stretching it, we're just stressing it. Um but it, it made it a little more comfortable uh, having the 15s out there. The uh, the Ultra Boost, as they are there. 15? You have you a size 14 foot normally? I, I, I felt like there was a little flex in there. Yeah. Oh. There wasn't a flex. That was just a fact. <laughs> but uh, can I just answer the fucking question? <laughs> <laughs> well, got to change yeah, it. Change it. Got to change uh, it. Yeah. Dude, sorry. We're, we're not on YouTube here. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, not sorry, but uh, uh, the Ultra Boost are not a flat bottom shoe, um, and so the flat bottom is just not as good for the uh, for the walking. So it has uh, a little bit of uh, some curvature, and we know curvature is is uh, is better for the for the walking. So, well, ladies and gentlemen, it has been up. Shout out to shout out to Adidas and and to. Uh, to the ultra boot. And uh, to, the, to the number one of the day. All right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Zero. <laughs> We're up to four, I think. Yeah, that's pretty good. We're up to five days. That's an all time high. That is the our all yeah, that is our yeah. record thus far yeah. for how many shows we've made it Damn. without it. But to be clear, completely necessary in that situation. Yes. But follow up. Had no idea you were a size fourteen. Wow. This guy. Massive hands. I think there was some there were some other F words in there we could have bleeped as well. Might have been names. But, uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. not, not <laughs> <laughs>